Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be taking a road trip from Salt Lake City to Reno, Nevada. I'm going to try FT8 with the new DigiRig Mobile. And I'm going to be a passenger for this trip. And what that's going to let me do is activate some HF Mobile. And normally I would operate on sideband with the radio up here and I would dial the knobs and it's a big old wire mess down here. And this activation is going to be a lot different in the sense that I'm only going to be doing FT8. I've got my laptop sitting up here with me and I've got a little tabletop thing that I'm going to put the laptop on. I'll use my phone as the hotspot when we have cell service. I'm also going to be doing something a little bit different for power. I'm going to be using a 100 amp hour lithium battery for the activation. It's not plugged into the truck. There's no solar panels. There's nothing. So it's going to have to last the entire trip. And because the 857 does not have a tuner in it, I'm going to be using my LDG AT200 Pro. It's hooked into a battery source. Being that low in the band, the antennas are only tuned for a phone, the phone portion of the band and that's not gonna work really good for this activation. Now there's also a problem in that my laptop only has a certain amount of battery. I do have an inverter for that and I may plug that in to see if I can keep the process going. Now I did try a couple of the masks. I'm using the long one right here, which is, uh, that's gonna be the best one. Every band 10, 15, and 40 meters actually turns out okay using the longer one. I'm not a big fan of that one because we gotta be careful driving into uh, gas stations and around trees and stuff like that. I tried this shorter mast, and because that mast is so much shorter, the resonant frequency was so much higher, it just, it's not gonna work. I'm taking it along with the trip anyway because you never know if that's gonna play a role later on. Now here's what's nice about being on a road trip when you have nowhere else to go, and that's you get to troubleshoot. And I found a couple of problems with the rig. The way I have it set up in the truck, with the antenna being so mismatched for the bands that I'm on, I got a lot of RF back into the cab of the truck. And the radio was about three feet away from the actual antenna itself. And yes, driving down the road, the radio could certainly hear the FT8 signals. But when I would transmit, the RF would get back into the radio. Sometimes it would only last one calling of CQ or maybe a couple. And then the radio would be quiet. I would get nothing on the waterfall. And this was a problem. Once I discovered what was going on, I moved the radio closer to me and I put it up more on the front console and this was a big deal. When you're working FT8 on a radio, you've got to be able to see the ALC meter on your rig. And since I couldn't see it on the 857, I'm constantly turning my neck around looking for that thing. And this is primarily because this is my first attempt at passenger mobile FT8 going down the road. So the first problem solved, and that's putting the radio up at the front console so I could see what was going on. Now I knew I still had a problem because it would take over five minutes sometimes to even make a contact. These stations would transmit, I would transmit back. We never made the connection on a lot of them. And because I didn't get a lot of time up front to do a shakedown of the setup, this is how we learn, on the go. But let's say I was operating half the time for four hours. I made 20 contacts, that's not very good. Once we arrived at our final destination, I had a short list of things I needed to get accomplished, and here's what I did. The antennas were not very tuned. I was way off on frequency, I think, 10, 15, and 20 meters were set for the highest end of the band, which is not going to be very good. I need to fix that, but on top of it, right here is where the uh, radio was, and it's like right next door to here where the antenna is normally up on top of here. This is the mount that I use on the back of the truck. It's a puck mount. The coax comes from the cab into the bed and up the side of the puck that's right there, and then attach right to the mount. Well, that's not gonna be good enough. So I took one of my coax chokes and I put it just inside here and uh, carries down the side of the truck. And then it attaches to my coax feed line that goes inside. Now with these changes, with the rig being up here on the center console and not being over here on the back seat, I'm expecting a lot less RFI. So hopefully it'll be a little bit better and the receiver won't lock up. With this resonator system, the Hustler system, I can put on four bands. So I've got one at the top and then three additional bands that you can put on this thing. It's not recommended that you drive down the road with this thing installed, but I do it. So if you do, do this at your own risk. And that thing is a high wind load when you've got multiple resonator bands on at the same time. It's not so bad if you use one or two, like 10 or 15 or maybe even 20, but Putting a 40 or an 80 meter resonator on here, that puts some big wind load on. So in that case, I'll normally use this short mast because that's really the only way to travel. You can take this mast, this part of it, 
and put one resonator just on the top of here and then you're only working one band and that's totally cool. I'll do that for 80 meters because of the wind load that's on here. Now because the Hustler system is a lot cheaper than let's say a screwdriver antenna and all the gear that comes along with it, it's like a hamstick setup. So um, you screw on the resonators to this uh, nice resonator hat and uh, you get multi-band from this. This is great if you're stationary mobile and you're just sitting at a campground or a park and you want to get on the air, you can load this thing up and you are good to go. I'm going to start off with 10 and 15 meters this morning. Last night, right as it was getting dark and I ran out of daylight, I got these just about all dialed in. So they're going to be good enough, close enough to the bottom of the band for digital because that's what we're going to be doing on this road trip back where we're going to get about six different grid squares that we're going to pass through and hopefully we'll get to work a bunch of people. How this fits, this quick disconnect, is you drop it on the top pin and give it a twist and it will lock right into this thing. It's fantastic and super fast. So when I pull up to a gas station or we come to an area where I gotta quickly get out and get this thing, let's say we're going through some speed bumps and this thing would be out of control. Well, this makes it so fast. I can hop out of my passenger seat where I'm usually operating from, put this down, drop it in the back of the truck and we're all good to go. I'm gonna be using this short mast. The thing's not very tall, so the antenna is just barely above the cab. And that's okay, that's what it's designed for. So in the end, with all the antenna tuning to get those three elements dialed in for the resonator, the RFI choke put in down here, and I put some aluminum to where the body meets the, uh, the puck mount, the pocket mount, it should be a lot more improved. And because I'm using an alligator clip on the 10 meter section, I don't want that thing to move around in the wind because it's not going to be stable driving 80 miles an hour. So I've got some super heavy duty duct tape, a small piece of that on there to hold it in the right position so that it doesn't move. This is just temporary until we get home, but it'll work. Now we're ready to hit the road. Tomorrow we get on the road and all we have to do is make contacts. And now with the rig all set up the way it should be, making contacts on the way back was a lot more expected. It's what I would have expected in the first place. And that was being able to reach places like Japan, Canada, Australia, Cuba, Mexico, and stations all across the U.S. And the 100 amp hour battery lasted great. Even when using my battery charger to charge up the laptop for the journey, I had enough power to run that radio at 75 and towards the end of the trip, 100 watts. Admittedly, I didn't bond all the components of the truck. I didn't go around and use big straps to do this. And for me, I didn't need that because I got to operate and everything worked great. Don't let the process be so overwhelming that you don't get out and operate your radio. Operating portable is probably one of the most fun and rewarding kind of things you get to do because you're setting up all your gear and you're doing the configuration yourself. Setting up your radio for mobile operation should be something fun and you should definitely experience that, whether you're using a mag mount antenna or something more involved where I have a mount on my truck. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and if you wanna see more videos on portable operating, check this one out right here.